Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, everyone. This is Ted Thomas, and welcome to the podcast today. As we call this Imagine Wealth Without Risk, and I love to talk about tax lien certificates and tax deeds. If you buy one of those tax deeds, you're going to have you're going to have a problem getting it sold. And all of the clients know how to buy, but we're going to be able to help you with the selling part of it today. So my guest today is is Mitch Stevens, and he's located over in Texas. Now, where about in Texas are you, Mitch? I'm in San Antonio, technically Canyon Lake, but the store is in. Okay, come in <clears throat> down there in that high tech area. Huh? So good. You're, looks to me like uh, any guy that's done. Listen to these books, folks. He writes books about uh, real estate. The first book he wrote is My Life and 1,000 Houses. Can you imagine? We're not going to have time for that today, but we're going to talk about his third book today and what a talented man this guy is. This, this book is called My Life and a Thousand Houses, but listen to this The Art of Owner Financing. And everyone that's on my line, needs to know about owner financing. Why? Because when the banks shut everybody down, you're going to need some help. So Mitch, let's get into this. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then let's get in later after 10 minutes or so. Let's get into this owner financing because I'm a big advocate of what you talk about and I want to give you the best we can with our audience here. So tell us a little bit about you and how you got started and how long you've been doing all this. I've bought a house every four to five days in or about San Antonio, Texas for 22 years. I've been in the game for 24 years, but I took a two year hiatus in the middle. So that book was written eight years ago. There's, I've bought and sold over 2000 houses since, since, two, since that book came out. Who's counting though, Ted, who's counting? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we buy a house about every four to five days. We owner finance about 65% of the houses that we buy. We retail, 35 uh, 30% and we wholesale about 5%. I love seller financing because I may be one of the only people in the nation except for maybe my students. I buy a house for $50,000. And because I know that I can owner finance it for 100, so I negotiate 50 to 60% sales uh, sales price, acquisition price. And so I'm buying houses for fifty, sixty thousand, selling them for a hundred thousand with ten percent down, and I'm selling them on a fixed thirty-year ten percent note. And oh, I don't require loans. I don't require refinancing. I don't require anything. I just give me your ten percent or more, and I will carry a note for thirty years for you. And I've done it hundreds and hundreds of times. Wow. So tell us a little bit about this owner financing. Tell us about what's, what attracts the client to you. Obviously, they might have been turned down by a bank and that kind of, So tell us a little bit about that. And then let's talk about this owner financing. Now, my clients buy properties at tax auctions, and they'd like to get them for $0.10, cents, $0.20, cents, all the way up to $0.50 cents on the dollar like you do. Because it seems the world's ran out of those fixer-uppers in a lot of places. Not in San Antonio, maybe, but the rest of the world that was overwhelmed with them now I'm having all these guys who were rehabbers all showing up at my tax deed conferences. And I'm saying, what are you guys doing here? They ran out of houses, but it doesn't sound like you've run out of houses because you've got a system. So tell us about your system. We'd love to hear about it. We buy about 100 houses a year for 22 years on average. This year, we'll buy a little over 100. The previous two or three years, we were a little under 100 because the competition was fierce and there's a seminar on every corner every weekend and everybody's a house slipper it seems like today but until they find out that it's a job and it's it's highly scientific now because of the competition we buy these houses and we put them up for sale we, you said how to sell them i was just working on our sales we use no signs in our houses and no signs around the neighborhood we only uh-huh. use facebook business page we drive uh-huh. everything there. We put up uh-huh. generic signs throughout the city that says Casas Dueño a Dueño because we really only advertise in Spanish. All our websites are in Spanish. My people are all bilingual. I stole the Spanish market in seller financing in San Antonio, population 2 million people, more or less. And wow. We put up generic signs that say free list of owner financed homes in Spanish, and people call. Say that, say that, say that again sl- slowly for me, Mitch. I didn't get it. You put up a sign 
It's in Spanish, but say it in English for me. Free list of owner finance homes. Oh, a free list, you said. Okay, I get it now. Okay, good. Free list. And then they call it, it's just a recording that tells them, because you have called this number, if you've called this number from your cell phone number has now automatically been placed in a text distribution list that will notify you anytime I have a seller finance or owner finance home available. This is all in Spanish. Uh To get off this list, just reply to any text with the word stop and you'll be removed. I put up 600 of those signs around the city over a four month period. And I have 10,833 people on my text distribution list. And I use Livecom, L-I-V-E-C-O-M.com. If you watch, if you watch the video on the homepage, you'll see how I generated all these phone numbers. I used to put 20 signs around every house and one in the front yard. And I would have 10 houses for sale on any given weekend. And I was getting 150 phone calls weekend, and it was burning out my salespeople. By 1 o'clock, they weren't even answering the phone. And they were asking them a bunch of bullshit questions and, you know, want to know how much the rent is. And it wasn't for rent. It was clearly said for sale. And it was frustrating. So now I take the Livecom system. I forward all the calls on those houses. When, When I used to put out signs around houses, I don't need to put out signs around houses now because I built up my Facebook marketplace to over 7,000, 8,000 people. And every time, and, and when they follow or like that page, they get notified every time there's a posting on their Facebook page. They get notified every time someone buys a house and we take pictures of them holding their keys and their contract smiling. We built a community. <laughs> uh, and and, nice, and nice. if you want to own or finance houses, we, we have videos explaining our application and how it works our down payments, when you sign the contract, you bring in an additional non-refundable $1,500, bucks, you have $1,000 to fill out the application, $1,500 when you sign the contract, so you have $2,500 non refundable We take only 10% or more down. We will not take less one penny less than 10%. We make all this stuff very clear in our Facebook market page. We describe our 30-year loans. We describe going through an RMLO and, and that we're following federal and state guidelines and making people very comfortable. We average 10 days on the market for 90% of our houses. And that other 10% is properties that we step out there on that we know we're gonna have a hard time, but but because we're looking for a certain kind of buyer, maybe that demographic's really small. But if you take out those ones that we are fully aware are gonna be difficult, we have 10 days on the market. Wow, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And wow. it's completely free. So, so what you, happens? You're really not a real estate guy. You're a marketing guy. Everybody's a marketing guy if they have a business. There is no business without marketing, right? Mitch, say that again, please. There is no business without marketing. Unless you're a dictator, you're marketing. Exactly. And so even the dictator's market is called propaganda. There you go. What we've done is we used to have to pay for money in the classifieds to sell houses. We used to have to build websites. We do have a website, but it's only for credibility. It doesn't sell. We don't post our inventory. When they go to our website, it tells all about our company and everything. And our website is casasdueñoadueño.com. It means homes, owner to owner.com. And it tells everyone, if you want to see our inventory, and it gives them the link to the Facebook market page. Because the Facebook market page automatically updates everybody for free every time we post something there. And the idea is to post and build a community. So I had signs out around my houses, and I had signed a a live palm phone number to each house. And then I forwarded that phone number to a recording about that house so that my salespeople didn't have to say a thousand times a day, this house is for sale, not for rent. This house is the three bedroom, two bath, 1200 square feet, built in 1968. It has a lot that measures X, Y, Z, you know, on and on. And my guy never has to say that again, but once into a microphone, into the recording. And then it's perfect every time that recording answers at six in the morning on Sunday and it answers at 12 o'clock midnight on Monday. It, it, it gets it perfect every time, and then mm. we don't even we personally 
we don't start out leaving a way for them to contact us. We, at the end of the recording, we tell them, if you think this is the house for you, this is what you do. You get you and your family in the car, you drive to 123 Main Street, you get out of your car, check out the front yard, check out the backyard, look through the windows, check out the neighborhood, and if this is still the house for you and your family and you definitely have X amount down or more, then call the red phone number in the back window. So I went from getting, I, I still collecting 150 phone numbers a weekend, still collecting the numbers, and I can still text them or I can still call them. But now I only have eight people this weekend calling my salespeople and they're fighting over them because they qualified themselves and they're buyers. Wow, you really have, you've really created a machine, absolutely. Congratulations and then, and then to you. Livecom has a feature where you can click on, for every phone number, you have a choice to click on. Uh, 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 it's called Instant Call Connect. If you turn Instant Call Connect on, and this is what we do for our, our, our houses that we're having trouble moving, like they go over 10 days and we don't have a contract or a bunch of interest, we click on that button for that phone number. And every time someone starts listening to our recording, my salespeople get a text going, someone from this phone number right here, XYZ MNOP, is listening to the recording on 123 Main Street right now, posing the question wow. to my salesperson. Do you want to call them because they're engaged? So we give oh, them a few minutes amazing. to get through the recording, then we call them. So we have it on autopilot until the house isn't moving, and then we can adjust it so we can pay more personal attention to it. And there's a reason why I sell, uh, bought and sold 2,000 houses, 100 houses a year for 22 years, Ted. There's a reason. <laughs> really? So tell me some of the reasons. Obviously, you're a hell of a marketer. Tell me about your pricing. Do you get a certain percentage of well, market or where are you there? We set our price by using a formula. We go in, you can't make an offer to buy a house until you know what you can sell it for. It wouldn't be wise unless you're paying such a ridiculous price that you don't even need to know that yet. But for the most time, when we go to negotiate, we don't know what we're going to be able to get the house for. So we have to know what we can sell it for before we can even begin negotiations. So what we do is we go out and we find out what the rents are. My goal is to find houses that I can create a PITI payment using a 30-year 10% mortgage. And the PITI payment is equal to the rent in the neighborhood. So if, oh. if this neighborhood got three twos and the three twos rent for about 1200 a month, then I'm going to make a PITI payment. I'm going to back into that 1200 a month. And I'm going to use 10% interest and I'm going to use 30 years and I'm going to, I'm going to solve for the balance. And then I'm going to add 10% on that loan balance for a down payment. Actually, I add 12% because I average 12% down because I asked for 12%, but I will take no less than 10. And so I back in and my prices are based on like a cap rate. I base, I back into the rents to decide my price. Would you like that formula? Get your pen and paper. No, don't do that. Do, don't do that now. We, 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 you and I are going to do another call because this is, you're, you're giving so much stuff. They, they, they're drinking out of a fire hose already. So, so what do you do with the um, – anybody who's trying to keep up with you is not going to be able to. And I, I've been doing this for 40 years too, so I'm having trouble keeping up. So if I am, I know they are. So, so let's slow it down. Remember, our guy's in the car driving. So let's give him get the basics. Hey, well, you, you've got – Remember, the, you're a the, PhD, and these guys are students. Okay, so hold on a second. Let me just slow you down. You get the answers, so I, I need uh, that's okay. what they wanted the answers. Okay, go ahead. Say what you want so to say. These house, the owner financing strategy works best in uh, houses that are like 160 thousand or less. The more expensive right. the house, the more difficult it is to keep the relationship between the rent and the um, mortgage payment. <clears throat> Did you also know that you can charge, I charge P-I-T-I-S, and that's principal right. interest taxes insurance, and I also charge $35 for servicing fee. Did you know you could charge a servicing fee along with the other nice. things you charge and make sure. them pay for your note servicing company? So I right. use MoatNoteServicing.com. That's Moat, M-O-A-T, like a moat around a castle. They charge me 35 bucks a month. They do all my collections all the way up to the point of I got to hire an attorney and foreclose. And they'll even send my attorney the message that we need to start a foreclosure if I give them permission in my attorney's name. 
And then they do all the year end reporting. They send out all the paperwork for interest paid and everything for, so for 35 bucks, that's great. Even if I had to pay it, but I don't even have to pay the 35 bucks because I charge my buyer. I charge my buyer P I T I S. Sure. Sure. And so, because I don't make my money doing collections. I make my money buying houses. That right, nothing right. happens if you don't buy a house. So okay. that's so you do it seller you're doing seller financing. What do you do with the paper? What do you do with the look? Let's do this. Let's just run a hypothetical and use generic numbers. Sure. I let's say I'm doing a hundred I'm doing a hundred houses this year. That's eight houses a month. Okay. I picked up ten thousand dollars average on a down payment. So this month I picked up Good. eighty thousand in a down payment. And I created eight more notes to add to my portfolio. And on average, I profit $535 a month between what I owe my private lenders and what I collect on the payment on average. So okay. let's just use 500 okay. as a round number, 500 as a okay. round number. If I, I got it. eight houses bringing in 500 a month positive cash flow, how much did I up my positive cash flow this month? I upped it $4,000 oh, a month. But I collected 80000 in a down payment, and I don't have one penny of my money in any of these houses. So I never sell my notes, Ted, because I just made 80000 in down payments. What do I need to sell a note for? Oh, you don't sell them. Okay, good. All right. Well, keep in mind, you're a 20-year veteran. The person listening is probably just brand new. So uh, they, well, they're okay, wondering let's say the person that. just listening. Let's say the person just listening only does one house a month and he makes 10 grand and he gets 500 coming in on his first month. Most people nice. can live off of 10 grand a month. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so do, you, do you have a lot of private lenders or do you do them all yourself? I buy houses with OPM, other people's money. I take okay. the money I make. I have $20 million in private money, but I didn't start that way. I started with 50000 22 years ago, but it's amazing what happens when you pay people as agreed and never ever give them a deed to a property or cause them any problems. You just make your damn payments. And then they, right. they want to give you more money. And then their friends want to give you money. And then you look up one day and you got $20 million and you have to start a hard money loan company because you can't buy all the houses with all the money they're giving you. Nice problem to have. I, I admire you. So you're, but, you're here's where we're going with this. We're going with this. You take on your first day or your, when you're a newbie, you're out. Sometimes you got to wholesale some houses, but there's, I'm going to quote Jack Bosch. There's one time cash. And he had a wrote a book called forever cash. And he describes one time cash, temporary cash and forever cash. So I borrow money a hundred percent to, to do flips and to do owner financing. Uh -huh. And I take the money I create from those two strategies and I buy into a forever strategy, which is boat and mini storages, self storages. I own 1600 doors in 14 locations of storages. So I take my money and I put it into a forever play or one time cash notes are temporary because they are going to expire. So you use those two strategies to build incredible wealth. And you take the money you make and you got to buy into a forever strategy, whether it be apartment complexes. But I chose self-storage because it is the least resistant foreclosure on the planet. And no one really cares or fights when they lose their crap because all it is crap in there most of the time. And there's no hot water heaters. There's no sheetrock. There's no carpet. There's no electric to speak of. There's one door. There's no windows. I love the storages. And plus, on 1,600 unit storages, I can be increasing my rent by small increments all the time. And by the time I get to the end of the 1600, I just start over. So there's an endless wheel of rent increases going on every single day. Nice. Nice. So you not only like houses, you like rental units. What else do you like? I don't like rental houses. I like renting self storage. I hate renting houses because when you rent houses, I don't ever know if it's my money. I mean, I could collect the rent for one month. I can collect the rent for three months. And then if the air conditioner breaks, I got to give all that money to the air conditioner man. And I tried yeah, it, man. I had 30 houses and I was trying to make a living between what I owed and what I was collecting. So say $350 a house was my positive cash flow back 
in 20 years ago. And, and that was good money back then. And one air conditioner would break or someone would steal it when they left me. And it's 2,400 bucks. My whole year, more than my whole year of cash flow was gone on that one incident. And so the problem with rentals is you never know if it's your money. If you sell or finance a house and you're collecting a mortgage payment, when that money clears the bank, it's your money. You'll never give it back to anybody else with a possible exception if you have to do a foreclosure. But then you'll give it, you'll give some of the, some of the money up for a foreclosure, but then you'll get it back in the form of a new down payment from the new buyer in the future and probably more. You'll get your expenses back plus an extra five or 6,000. So I fell in love with the seller financing, owner financing strategy, and I buy houses and I just never sell notes because you know, it doesn't take long. Your cash flow is 10000 20000 a month, plus you're making fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a month in down payments. I mean, okay. you would, all you would do is if you sold the note would cause yourself a huge tax ramification. So let me ask you a couple of questions, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, that'd be great. Because the person that's listening to this, you're at the PhD level and they're at the newbie student level. So what do you recommend, where do you recommend they start and walk us through just a basic, you like under under 150,000, $100,000 house, whatever you want to use, so that they get a nice clear picture of what you do. I think think you've told them so much that there's too much for a person to comprehend. You're you're so knowledgeable and you have so much uh, experience, but the person listening is driving a car. So could you just do some real basic stuff for a couple of minutes? Yeah, I can. Hi, it's Linda. Make sure you check out the free training webinar that's on tedthomas.com. Again, that's tedthomas.com, and you can learn more in-depth about tax lien certificates and tax-defaulted properties. First of all, Thank you. if you want to just take it at your own pace, you can always go to get my book, My Life in a Thousand Houses, The Art of Owner Financing, where I take case studies and color pictures and color graphs and just lay it all out there, all the numbers. It's not that nice. hard to follow. And uh, say the yeah, book so again so that people go there. Say the, say the book My again. Life in a Thousand Houses is a three-book series, and it's the third book in the series, The Art of okay. Owner Financing. You can search I my guess. name or w- just search the internet for My Life in a Thousand Houses. It's also on Amazon, but if you order it from my website, 1000houses.com, it'll come autographed, and it'll get to you, and it's a little bit cheaper than Amazon. Well, okay, good. All right, thank you. Okay, so that's good. But uh, give us for our for our listening audience because we're going to run out of time, and I don't I hate to run out of time with such a great subject, but we, we can do this again. I'm sure you'll come back again. But uh, right now, just give us a basic example of where a person should start. You started somewhere. You you weren't a multimillionaire to start. You started like many people, and and we have a few of those people on the phone. Yeah, we all started broke, I think, and the ones that start with a lot of money then go broke and have to figure it out again. <laughs> you have money, it's too easy to write checks. Yeah, um, right. So let's do an example. I find I get this rent formula, and I figure out that based on the rents, to get a payment of a thousand bucks, I'm going to be able to sell this house for a hundred and ten thousand, with ten thousand down, and I'm going to be able to carry a hundred thousand dollar note at ten percent for thirty years. Now that's what I figured out. So I go in to negotiate knowing that I can sell this house for 110 and for nice, easy round numbers, let's just say I negotiate a fantastic deal, got lucky, and I buy this house for 50,000. I got a contract to buy it for 50,000. I call up my private lenders and I borrow 52,000. I always borrow $2,000 more than I need. And that's why private investors are so important because you can't do that with a bank, but you with a private lender, when you're borrowing so little against so much collateral, uh, you can get, you can write your own ticket, especially if they've been lending to you for years and decades. They just trust you. Right. So, right. I, but I only borrowed two. It's hardly over leveraging. And why do I borrow that extra two thousand? I borrow it because it costs me two thousand dollars to find this guy. And if I'm doing a hundred houses a year and I leave two thousand in advertising on every house, that's two hundred thousand a year I'm leaving laying around. And in five years, that's a million bucks. So I always borrow back and replace my advertising budget plus the cost of the house and the cost of the repair. So I have zero in it and I got my advertising dollars back. Let's say my payment, I borrow it at 8% interest only five years. 
I have also been known to borrow at 9% for 10 years fully amortized and at 10% for 15 years fully amortized. But let's just say on this one, I'm borrowing interest only because I'm borrowing from an old person and they don't want to have to figure out how much is principal and interest. They just want to know how much they can spend when they get a check. So in this case, they can spend it all because it's interest payments only. And my payment is 350. Then I sell it for 110 with 10 uh, with with 10% down would be 12,000 down. So I got 12,000 in my right hand pocket. I got 2,000 on my advertising money in my left hand pocket. That's 14,000 bucks I got back so far. And I'm going to carry the note at 100,000 at 10% for 30 years fixed. And they don't have to refi, there's no balloon, it's just a fixed 30 year mortgage. And their payment to me is 850. So I got 850 coming in. I got 350 coming out. I got 500 right in the middle that's all mine. Plus I I got $14,000 cash in my pocket, 2,000 for my to to replenish my advertising budget, and 12,000 to pay my car payment and take my wife out to dinner with, to pay my house payment. <laughs> that's, so how it works is, I take the rents and I just back into them. I find out how much this guy who's been paying a thousand a month in rent. How much can he afford in a payment if the terms are 10% in 30 years? I figure out how much he can borrow to get the same payment as rent. And then I add 12% on top of that finance amount to come up with the owner finance price. Now, I haven't invented much in my life, Ted, but I did invent something. I invented the OFV, the owner finance value. It's not the broker's professional opinion. It's not a CMA. It's not an appraised value. It is a value unto itself based on the rent. And the time that you really notice that it's unto itself is in the recession when house prices drop and rents go up, Yep. my sales price is going up. The only sales price in the whole land that's going up in a recession is the guy who's owner financing a house. His price is going up with the rent. This business is recession proof. And I proved it in 2009, which was called the Great Recession. It was the worst recession in the history of the United States, and it was was headed towards a depression, but it never got to a yeah. depression. So I know yeah. under the worst of times, this strategy works because what happens in a recession? We, the banks close, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, banks hold on. Hold on. Don't, don't, don't go into the politics. Just stay with what we got. I've only got two minutes left. I'm, I'm running out of time. Okay. Tell All me right. what your recommendation is as a as a multimillionaire who's been doing this for 20 years, started out with the basics. What do you recommend for a young person? And you got to get done in, in 90 seconds. The first thing we do is when you have no money, you're a professional deal finder, contract writer upper, and that's all you got. You you trade when you don't have when you don't have money. You trade time and expertise for your lack of money. If you don't have money, you have to have time to give and you have to have an expertise at something. So you learn how to find deals, extraordinary deals, and you learn how to write them up so that you have time to close. You need extraordinary deals and time to close so that you can attract the money because there's no way in hell that a great deal with plenty of time to close doesn't find the money. And that's and you you start out by coming to the table with the most important component of the whole scenario of every strategy ever invented in real estate, which is the deal. Nothing starts without a deal. You learn how to get deals, the money will come. You learn how to get a lot of deals, a lot of people will want to give you a lot of money. Most of them will want to be your partners. And you may have to partner with them for a time. But okay, now, hold on. I'm going to run out of time. I want to give you time to promo your book here. So get, let's slow okay. you down. You, you got enough information for five days, and I only got 30 minutes at a time. So uh, I, I hope you'll uh, come again, and I will do a video with you, too. So, so uh, let me ask you uh, uh, one question and give me just a yes or no answer or whatever. What's the most important thing, to be a deal maker or to be a, a marketer? Which is the most important or are they equal? They're one and the same. You can't really be a deal maker if you're not marketing somehow to okay, find okay. the people – to okay. buy the product. If, I re if my listeners get your book and read it, uh, give me a condensed version in 10 seconds of what, which is the most important thing they'll learn in the book. It, it, mostly how to create wealth out of thin air. Wow, that's wonderful. Wonderful. Anyway, thank you. You just did a tremendous job. I want to call you back and we'll get our 
We had some technical difficulties starting today, but we'll get those sorted out. You're a tremendous interview. This is really informative. You're a world of information. Let's see if we can get some books sold for you. I don't know if you will or not, but tell us uh, which book you, we, they should order and where they should start, and then we'll conclude for today. I think you just go to 1000houses.com. You can get the first 100 pages of my first book free. That's a little bit about my journey, how a dumbass figured out how to make some money. That would be me. And then I just rinsed and repeat and kept morphing and honing it. My life is about that was painful. How do you stop that? That was pleasurable. How do I get that more often? And that's all I did. Okay. You're a tremendous interview. Thanks for putting up with all the whatever we put up with earlier to get started. You did a great no job. Worries. I thank you. And I'll get, we'll get back to you and we'll do some more. I'll do a video because I have uh, clients that also come on long-term videos. Maybe we'll do a class, do a basic class or something like that. You, I noticed you've been teaching, so you can probably figure out a basic class we can do and, and tell people about this. They're, they're going to be shocked to meet you. I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah and, I'll, and I'll even explain why this business is recession-proof and how we proved it in the last recession. It's a good idea because I think we got one coming. What do you think? There's always one coming. Exactly, exactly. Mitch, thanks a lot. I appreciate your effort. You did a great job, and I'll look forward to talking to you soon. I know you get to start at 8 o'clock in the morning for us, so thank you, and I'll look forward to talking to you in the future. All right, Ted. Thanks a bunch. It was my pleasure. Had fun. Thank you for joining us today. Go to tedthomas.com to learn how you can start making smart, secure investments today. Be sure to check out the rest of the episodes to find out more about Imagine Wealth Without Risk.